Green House. That's where it all begins. Come out of the greenhouses and then they come out of the greenhouse and then they get planted in here. Okay. And then if we keep going down, uh oh, I'm stuck. Hold on, let's see. Oh, here's some excursion. Let's see if we can find you guys a edible flower. We own 20 acres. We only farm this one, not the second one. This one is on a half acre. Okay? So you can't imagine, I mean, you can imagine now what we can grow on a half acre and what a conventional farm has to grow on a half acre. We can, we're, we actually will quadruple what they can grow. Well, one, we can grow a lot more with a lot less land. That's number one. Secondly, nothing is grown in soil. It's all grown in nutrient-rich water, um, so there's no dirt. We harvest the product living with the roots still attached, which allows for a longer shelf life, whether it goes to the chef or whether it goes to your home. Some of our products can last maybe three weeks looking the same way you got it a week it's ago. Still, it's still alive. It's still it's alive. Living food. Yeah. So once you cut the root off of it, awesome. it's like any conventional product. If you don't mm -hmm. eat it, it's mm -hmm. done. So um, what are some other advantages it's to growing hydroponics? Yeah. Yeah. Less water, <clears throat> less, um, less uh, like pesticides and fungus and all that stuff. Oh, you, you have the Tell them about, you have the wasps in here and stuff? Yeah, yeah we, we, don't, we don't use any chemical pesticide, fungicide, or herbicide at all. We use um, botanical oils, beneficial fungi and bacteria, and a uh, pet wasps. That's my and favorite that's, part. Yeah. yeah. That's, and, it's so cool. And we do such a diverse range of products that it's, um, you don't really have an issue with it as long as you're rotating. I mean, occasionally you do have problems where you need to come out and use some of those products to try to, you know, update what's going on. But for the most part, it's pretty pretty balanced. We try to keep it as balanced as possible. Watching the watering. Right, because these things can sit. The root is actually sitting in, you know, the nutrient, not the plant, the root. So the root is getting fed all the time. Totally. Now a lot of products, for instance, we put arugula in the pot under the table because they don't like too much water. Yeah, so, you know, you learn as you go, but, um, okay, that's the one that can you know, not everything can <laughs> sit in the in this type of, of water all, you know, 24 hours, seven days a week. So are they constantly so, fed? Constant. So it's just like yeah. constant, like, little constant drips flow. in? Well, it's called a piss system because it's, like, you know, it pisses. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. a whole time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Like, you know, some stuff doesn't do well in straight water culture. Eggplant, the pepper. All this beans. stuff is like on a slant? Yeah, it's like six inches from level. And the water comes out of here? Yeah, well, if there's a there's a tank underneath that tent down there, the thousand gallon cistern, and the pump that's inside there drives it, and it sucks out of the tank and, and pushes it out here, and then it comes off of the main line and it comes down and it comes up these pipes and then it just you know drizzles out and then it goes down and it recaptures in those tubes that are on the other end mm -hmm. and then it goes back underground and it goes back to the tank so it goes around and around kind of like a fountain mm. it's like a big fountain if you think of it like in that terms and the minerals are in the water true yeah then we just hand dose in the tank like once a day wow Wow. Mm -hmm. See, so this is how we would harvest it, and this is how it goes into the box. You know, when we when we sell it. So, you know, this right now, if you'll note, it has no sand, no dirt, no grit. It's perfectly clean. Dandelion. Wow. This is the red. I'm gonna pass mm -hmm. it down if you guys keep walking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. 
200 varieties of produce here. And when I say that, I mean like we grow four different types of chard, seven types of arugula. We grow we 12 different greens, types right? of eggplants, four mustard greens. Oh, we did. Yeah. Just to the left of you is watercress. Mm. Wow. Wrinkle crest? Wrinkle, crinkle crest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not as strong as the water crest, but you got some zip to it. Mmm. Did you get it? Yeah, I did. Yeah, it was delicious. Here it is. So if Thank we keep you. going, I'll get some bigger fennel, but this yeah. is some fennel. Yeah. No fennel. Oh. Yeah, give it a try. These are cucumbers oh. coming off. These are our kinds of tomatoes? Uh, I think we do, uh, Maybe 13 or 14. Wow. We do like the large heirloom tomatoes and maybe like four or five colors. We do like the cluster tomato on the vine. And then we do all the baby tomatoes. The cherry, the berry, the pear, cucumber? the grape. Yeah. yeah. And how are they cucumbers? tasting? Good? Uh, cucumbers. We got cilantro here. Ooh, yeah. cilantro. We do cilantro um, this way also. This is a new kind of cilantro. It's called frilly cilantro. It looks like uh, caritas or dill. It's a lot less mild than the traditional cilantro. These are cucumbers growing from the ceiling. Look at that red lettuce. Wow. I mean, feel it. More you don't get that kind of, yeah, you can eat it, yeah. Okay. And it's not more. These are baby collard greens. <laughs> this is uh, shiso. This is shiso. a Japanese herb. Hmm. A lot of the sushi restaurants yeah. use this. Wanted, we can grow all summer long. The reason we can is because we chill our water. We have like an air conditioner on the water. So the right next to that little tent. We choose not to because at the end of July, we're about ready to faint. <laughs> we're really worn out. And, uh, you know, we, we sterilize this. See what they're doing? We completely, like, we sterilize the system down. We rid any bugs, we clean, we mow, we weed eat, we get it all cleaned up for the next season and that rids the bugs. They don't want to come back. When do you start the season? We start our season in, well we start seeding in the end of July when we close down. We kind of like wait a month and then we start seeding like the products that take like 90 and 120 days to grow. Tomatoes, peppers, um, Everything tastes the way it's supposed to taste here. Wow. Yeah. Everything tastes and everything else is subpar. You know what's <laughs> really you know what's really strange is some people put a knock on hydroponics and say it doesn't have the same flavor. Yes, they do. No, I think it has more. You guys are walking here wow. eating this and going, I have to say, what are you talking about? Yeah. yeah. The stuff tastes stronger than anything else. Yeah. yeah. And you so know how much nutri nutritional value is in this product? Yeah. Well, again, we deal with a lot of chefs in Broward, Dade, and Palm Beach County. We have a CSA program, a community-supported agricultural program with 46 members, and we sell at two farmers markets. So the reason we're putting up a second shade house is because we can't supply the demand. Money, but we love what we do. We're able to sustain our family of five on, on what we grow. My children need everything in here. I am an activist with the slow food movement. By, I'm trying to get school garden projects in oh, okay. schools mm -hmm. now. And um, I'm just all about local, support your local farms. Right. And because uh, if it weren't for us, you can't eat like this. You, you're not, you can't. There's very few organic farms in Florida. Very few. Very